Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about radial menus in plasticity. So radial menus exist, but they're not sort of in plasticity by default. So we're gonna talk about how to set it up in plasticity. We're gonna talk about how you can make your own radial menus. And then I wanna cover a tool that Peter at Take Refuge 3D released that makes the process so much easier for us. So a couple things to keep in mind first, that we're using plasticity version 24.2.6. This is likely going to be the end of development for this version of plasticity because we're awaiting version 25 to come out. I do know that there is some UI changes coming. Likely radial menus will be incorporated into that version. If not how it is now, maybe even a bit more. So it's something that we should at least get comfortable with and play around with to see if radial menus are something that we want to use in plasticity. Plasticity is very much a shortcut based program, making sure you understand the shortcut keys for, uh, you know, different tools. That's going to go a long way to being able to use plasticity. But radial menus opens up an extra layer to be able to get into the program without having to remember all your shortcuts. So first things first, how do we get to radial menus? Well, if you start to type in radial, nothing comes up by default in plasticity. What we need to do is we need to enable it. And there's a couple of steps to this process. First, in the description of the video, I've included a link to the plasticity manual. And there's a couple of sample JSON files. This is basically a text file that is gonna dictate which tools get placed in the radial menu and how many there are, their names, their commands, and, and so on. So make sure the first thing you do is you download the selection mode and the viewport settings radial. If you want more information on radial menus, you can go ahead and navigate through this document. At the very bottom, is a list of the commands. And if you wanted to build your own manually by doing this method of creating a text document, then you can do it that way. I, I don't suggest it. I strongly suggest using Peter's tool because it makes it so much easier. But if you want to, you can do it that manual way. Once you have that downloaded, the next thing that we're gonna do is go into our .plasticity folder. Now I'm using a Windows machine. If you are on a Mac OS or if you're on Linux, then you need to find the location of this .plasticity folder and make sure that you know where things like your key map are, your settings, the theme. These are basically all the documents that are gonna be controlling the commands in plasticity. The plasticity manual also has information about those other OSs, so make sure that you do dig into that if you're using something other than Windows. But what we need to do here is we need to create a new subfolder called radials. Just by having this folder, nothing magical happens. We need to put something in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the selection mode radial JSON file and the viewport settings that we downloaded. And basically this is all a radial menu is. It's this document, it gives us the name of that, which is what we're gonna see in our tool list. And then it gives us the command at each position, the icon for that command and the label or the text that we're gonna see in the center of it. So if we take a look at the viewport settings, we can see that we've got toggle orthographic, toggle x-ray, toggle overlays, and so on. So we're going to take both of those documents and just make sure when we download them that we put them into our radials folder. From here, what we need to do is we need to restart plasticity. You can do this by using uh, control shift and R, I think. For me, for whatever reason, that doesn't actually work. Uh, when I do control shift and R, I just get this black screen. So I actually just close plasticity and then I reopen it and simple enough. Once we've done that, hitting F on the keyboard, start to type in radial again. And now you can see that we've got radial menu, selection mode and viewport settings. So this is gonna give us those four positions and everywhere we go, it's gonna give us the icon. It's gonna list the command in the center and no matter where the cursor is on the screen, it's gonna activate those. Keep in mind that when you are using these menus, Escape does not get off of the menu. In order to get off of it without using any of these tools, you'll need to left click in the center area. But having those menus available to us is something that is gonna speed up the modeling process for a lot of users that aren't really comfortable or aren't really too concerned with using the shortcut method. So if you have to go all the way over here to select a circle, or if you have to come all the way over here to toggle render mode, now you'll be able to set those up to a shortcut key and you'll be able to use them quickly. But now let's get to 
Peter's tool, because this is something that is going to speed up the process of creating these documents. So Peter's tool, again, if you go to the description of the video, I'll leave a link there for his tool. It's something that he's got listed on Gumroad, and you can, uh, you can add a, um, a donation to, to download it. But basically what this does is this is a JSON creation tool. It allows us to manually build out the position of each of these tools. And once we're done, we export that document and it's just gonna live in that uh, radials folder that we created. So this is a really interesting way to go about this process and it simplifies it, meaning that we don't have to go ahead and look through an entire list of commands. This also does give us the ability to use nested radial menus, which is a pretty cool idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a simple menu and what I want to do is I want to create a, an, an option for me to use some of the XNURBS tools. So I'm going to start by searching for XNURBS. I can select the command and select add to menu. We can also search for something like, let's see, the square command. I can double click. It'll put it in the next available spot. And if I drag these and move them around, it's just going to swap them. The next thing that I might want is maybe raise degree and I'll double click and then maybe toggle points so that way you can turn raise degree off. And then if we wanted to add another menu here, we could do, uh, basically what we could do is drag and drop another menu. So up here you can see that we've got your name, add menu, your name modeling, and then we've got this viewport settings one. If I double click on this, it's going to put a nested menu in that last position. If we decide we don't want it, we can select it and, and do delete selected if we've got one of these selected. But for the most part, this is how we would manually build out these instead of going through a command list, finding those commands, and then going back and, and manually building that document. The important step to this, once we've got this built out, is we need to name it. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this one xnurbs. And then we need to export the JSON file. In order for this to work, what you need to do is make sure that you put dot radial and that's going to indicate that this is a radial menu. If you don't have that dot radial, it will not work. Once we save that, I'm going to go ahead and close the tool. I'm going to go ahead and restart plasticity because we added another document to that folder. We need to restart plasticity to make this work. I'm going to hit F, start to type in radial. And now you can see that we've got XNURBS. Uh, it has a, a shortcut key associated with it because I've actually created this menu before. Let's go ahead and go ahead and set it to the shortcut key Y. I'll just assign it the, the key Y. So now every time I hit Y, that menu is gonna pop up where the cursor is. So we've got XNURBS, square, raise degree, toggle points, and then I've got the settings. If I click the settings option, it's gonna bring up the secondary radial menu. So once again, uh, let's understand that the radial menus give us the ability to create a menu that could be surfacing. We could have one here for curves. We could have one here for standard modeling tools that you use all the time. And then you can toggle or drill down to those individual radial menus. You can have, uh, you know, you can have a dozen different spots on here. You can limit it to three or four. It just really depends on the tools you need access to. So this is a great way to work in plasticity and access these tools without having to use the F key and without having to remember the shortcut keys or worry about tools that are only displayed contextually, like things like Revolve only display when you've got a valid face or curve selection. But you can add Revolve to one of those, basically one of those radial menus and get access to it whenever you need. Keep in mind that even though you have access to these tools, it doesn't mean they're going to work if you don't have something valid selected. So, you know, for example, the square tool is only going to work if I've got, uh, you know, a boundary selected. So that tool, while it's great to have access to it, is only going to work if I've got something readily available and selected. So it doesn't change the functionality of the tool or the way in which it works. It's just a good way for us to access things. So again, raise degree, that looks good. I can toggle my points. I can, you know, move these up and I can, you know, make a deformed surface pretty quickly. So that's basically the process of setting up these radial menus. Again, if you haven't used them before, it's a pretty easy process to set up by making that subfolder and then taking some of those sample 
radial files, the, the JSON documents for selection mode and viewport settings. If you are planning to create your own, I would strongly suggest that you check out the builder that Peter has created over at Take Refuge 3D. This is a much quicker and easier process to build these things out than having to do it manually. It can still be done manually, of course, but um, this tool on its own is something that saved at least me a lot of time. Now, I'm gonna be playing around with this a bit more. I am going to be seeing how it works in the next version of Plasticity and how the tool access is gonna change there. But if you have any questions on this, please let me know. Remember that we are a Plasticity affiliate. You can use the code LEAD10 at checkout if you wanna save 10% off and help out the channel. But also keep in mind that Take Refuge 3D is also a Plasticity affiliate. So um, in this case, if you really appreciate the creation of this tool, make sure that you consider supporting his channel as well. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.